Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week. I'm Greg Jackson and today I'm taking a trip under the sea to find out if the seaweed is indeed always greener on the other side with this question from Android. I've heard the octopus are colour blind. So how can they so reliably match their background colours when they camouflage themselves? OK then, let's take the plunge and talk to Felicity Bedford from the University of Cambridge, who hopefully will be able to help us shed some light on the question. So your listener's absolutely correct. They are colourblind. So they only see in black and white and the shades of grey in the middle. And all of the colours appear within that spectrum to an octopus. So much simpler world in terms of colour. So how on earth do they then go about camouflaging with their environment if they're colourblind? Other than the fact that they can't see colour, they have incredibly good vision. So they can get a lot of accuracy about their environment, about the texture of their environment, about the brightness of their environment. And these are all really important things for when you're camouflaging, to break up your outline, break up the pattern of your body. Um, And generally, the way that predators pick out their prey is through movement, through brightness and through colour. So by getting the movement and the brightness right, they're taking away a few of the things that predators can use to spot them. And then it's only colour left. And we think that this is probably to do with the way that there's a limited set of colours available. And octopuses use something called chromatophores in their skin. So they've got a range of pigments to work with. Um, And these are pushed towards the surface of the skin to change the colour. So lots of different sacks of colour that are pushed and manipulated. And quite frankly, if you get it wrong, they get eaten. So there's a sort of evolutionary pressure there. And presumably, I'm thinking octopuses are underwater. And if you've ever been diving, actually, it's not that colourful down there in the first place. So it's not actually that useful to see in colour anyway. Now, you lose a lot of different light frequencies underwater, um, particularly the, the reds and stuff that get filtered out very early on. Um, and the, the chromatophores that they're using are in the blacks, the browns, the oranges, yellows, those kind of colours. Um, so they do tend to go into those ranges. And then there are some other cells that they can use that, which bring up luminescence and blues and greens, um, which actually reflect light rather than using these pigments instead. So they've got a lot of things that they can use to change their colour but they're not necessarily aware of the colour that they are. There you have it, Android. Octopuses can see texture and brightness, giving them quite the upper hand in the art of camouflage. No invisibility charms required. Next time, we head back to the age of the Flintstones to turn over a few more rocks. Hey, scientists. This is Kat from Kansas City, Missouri. I was reading a Gary Larson comic the other day and noticed all the cavemen had silly names. And it got me wondering... Did cavemen even have names? When did human beings start naming themselves? Interesting question, Kat. How did Fred and Wilma actually refer to one another? If you think you have the answer, then we'd of course love to hear from you. Tweet us at Naked Scientist, find us on Facebook, or of course there's always the forum, nakedscientists.com slash forum. Remember to tune in next week to learn what we've dug up. Thank you for listening. I've been Greg Jackson and this is Question of the Week. See you next time. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com. 